Hello and welcome to Desk Deployment. My name's Dave and today I'm going to be going through my process for creating and painting some jungle slash forest bases. I've received quite a few requests on specifically how I make my forest slash jungle bases, so that's what I've got for you today. So let's get straight to it. First off, I'd recommend building the model separate of the base. It makes it easier to build and paint both the model and the base. I'd also recommend making sure that you've built the model before you start the base, as it will be handy to see where the feet are going to be positioned when building the base up. It's a good idea to keep checking the foot spots as you are building up the base. So when building a base, I will start off by making the general shape of the base using layers of cork. I make sure to dry fit each layer before gluing it down. After the cork is stuck down, I get out some small stones, which will be little boulders and rocks, and glue those down. If you want to add any skulls, I'd either do it at this stage or after the next stage. Once the glue is dry, I get some mud texture paint and put a layer of it all over the base, making sure to let the rocks and skulls poke out. I make sure to put it on thickly where there's the edge of the layer of cork, so it creates a slope rather than a step. If you wanted to do more of a sheer side, like a mini cliff, I'd make sure that you rip the cork so it's a straight drop rather than steps and then give it a thinner layer of the texture paint. After you've let the texture paint dry, you can glue down any foliage that you might want to add to the base. For these bases, I've gone with the Bracken style plants that you can get from Citadel. This would be the other point where you could add skulls to the base. The next step is to add some more textures to the base. For this I mix up some PVA glue and some water. You could use straight PVA glue but you might find that once it dries you lose some of the finer details. You'll want to start with the biggest textures first, working down to the more finer detail. For the first layer I add some grit to the base by dabbing some of the PVA mixture in spots where I want the bigger texture and then sprinkle some grit on top. For these bases I believe that this is actually crushed coconut shell. Moving straight onto the finer detail texture, I move on using some sand in the same way that I did with the grit. I always do this while the glue is still wet from the grit as it can then capture some of the sand as well. I try to think about where I'm placing it so the bigger grit would be lowered down on the base where it might have rolled down to and the finer stuff can be higher up but you know, maybe where it gets caught on a rock or a ridge. Taking a break from adding textures to the base, it's time to add some more details. So as it's a forest or, or jungle, there's likely to be broken branches or logs littering the ground. For these bases, I'm using some twigs I just found in my garden and left to dry in a bedroom window above the radiator. Next it's time to finish off the texture and I add in some moss. In forests and jungles you won't have that much grass. There will be some, especially in clearings, but you'll generally find that will be more sort of mossy textures. To simulate this I'm using a fine grain static grass and this does need to be the grainy type rather than the long strands. 
I'll add moss to sections of the ground, some of the rocks, maybe a bit on a skull if I want it to look like it's been there for a while, and add some to the fallen branches or logs. As I mentioned earlier, whilst there isn't much grass in the forest, there will still be some and it's nice to add a few tufts just to break up the base a bit. On to the final bit of detail onto the bases, and yes you've guessed it, leaves. Would make sense that there were fallen leaves on the ground. You can use seeds or you can even get little cutters that will shape paper into leaves or you can be lazy and waste your money like me and buy leaf terrain from a hobby shop. I glue these down using the PVA and water mixture. After the base has dried I use the PVA mixture again and put a layer all over the parts that have been stuck down with the mixture so far as well as the logs and branches to help secure them in place. Once the PVA mixture is fully dried it's time to move on from the build phase to the painting phase. I start off by giving the bases a black undercoat and after that has dried I give the bases a quick blast of white from directly above. Using a brown acrylic ink I cover the ground, branches, logs and the stems of the plants. I then use a green acrylic ink to paint the vegetation. After the acrylic ink has dried I use a green wash on the vegetation. I also dab some patches on the ground to break it up a bit and also to add some to the logs and branches. Next up I use a bone colour to paint the skulls and a grey for the rocks and once dry I give everything apart from the moss, grass, bracken leaves a brown wash. Using the same bone colour from earlier I dry brush the skulls and the rocks to bring back some of the brightness and also help define the edges. Sticking with dry brushing, I use a bright green for the grass, leaves and moss. Then to add some variety to the muddy parts of the base I'd add some light brown pigment onto the higher areas of the base to make it look like it's a bit drier than the lower areas. The last thing to paint on the bases is the base rims which of course should be black. With the bases done you may want to give them a matte varnish to protect them or you may want to wait until you've affixed the models. And here we are, some forest slash jungle style bases. And here they are again but with some models attached. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and found it somewhat helpful. Um, if you have any feedback, please feel free to leave a comment below. I do read them all. This video was done at the request of the viewers, so please do let me know if there's something that you'd like to see in a future video. Stay safe and hope to see you again soon.